Hi there, this is Christine, demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And a friend of mine was asking me a question when we were making our, uh, when we were having our paper pumpkin night um, this week. So I wanted to um, do a little demonstration. So what she asked me was if I could use this cutout piece and how to do, like how to use this as a stencil. So I thought, let's do it. Now, I'm going to be a little bit daring, and this may not work, and I may have to um, improvise. But uh, if that happens, then you'll you'll see you'll see that in action. <laughs> if you've watched my videos, you've seen you've seen me change tactic a few times midstream, <laughs> and that's okay. So I've got here thick white is what I want to use for my card base, and what I've done is I have uh, cut it in half so it's it measures five and a half by eight and a half scored it at four and a quarter and i just burnished that fold so we're gonna stencil directly onto this card is the hope well we are gonna do it <laughs> whether or not it looks great is what we hope so what i want to do and i'm going to do a combination of both the stenciling and stamping and what i'm going to do is we are going to use pair of pizzazz for the stenciling piece. Now, one thing I recommend every time, and I'm sorry, I did not get my sticky notes out. I'm just gonna dig those up. Um, these are the closest at hand, so we'll go with these. Um, I've got stacks of sticky notes. I don't even know where they all come from. So I wanna use this this branch here, um, so but I, I don't wanna get color through this part. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna block that off. So um, there's masking tape that Stampin' Up! sells that you can use, but I'm, I don't know, I've always just used my sticky notes. So I'm gonna keep using my sticky notes because I have lots. <laughs> and if it ain't broke, I don't fix it. All right, so there we go. Um, now, I just need to figure out where I'm gonna put it I have decided, and this will come together later, so I'm going to be using this circle. And I'm using a bunch of retiring products today just to kind of showcase them. So this is the In Color Shimmer Paper, which I just love. It's sheets of four by, uh, sorry, six by six of each of the 2022 um, to 24 in colors. So this is the, um, colors that Tahitian Tide and it's um it's ombre so you can see it's a little bit darker down here and it gets lighter so and I've used my circle dies layering circle dies to cut it out I am uh, sad to see those retire I will definitely be keeping mine close at hand um they are bringing back punches though circle punches um in different sizes so if you haven't got a die cutting machine the circle punches are a great option. If you have a die cutting machine, definitely hang on to those circle dies. And if you don't have those circle dies, you probably wanna pick those up before they disappear at the end of April. Um, so our circle is quite large. And actually, I'm wondering. Yes, we are going to do a landscape card instead of portrait for the orientation because I want the leaves to kind of show on either side. So we've got our circle, I've got an idea of positioning. And now we're gonna go ahead. And mainly I just wanna make sure that the stem would be under the circle. Given the size of the circle I've chosen, that won't be an issue. So I'm using my blending brush. Um, you could use the smaller blending brushes that Stampin' Up! has come out with as well. Um, I forgot to grab my scrap paper. That's not it. Um, I always like to use scrap paper when I'm doing this because it's a bit messier. And where is my scrap paper? Oh, I was so organized. I planned everything out and I forgot to grab my scrap paper. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse the motion. I'm just grabbing a bit more scrap. A number of years ago, my father gave me a whole pile of dot matrix printer paper, and I am very slowly making my way through. I actually think that the box replenishes as I use it. That's my theory. 
Okay, so I've positioned where I want to have this. I've got pair of pizzazz on my brush. I'm just going to tap and we do have enough to work with. So the key to this stencil and any stencil that is, you know, softer, um, is that you want to be gentle. So I'm not pressing too hard and I do feel that I want more ink on here. So I'm just going to get a bit more. So I'm going gently and I'm going in one, like I'm trying not to go against the, um, die cut here, the what's left behind, because I don't want to move these pieces as I'm trying to get the ink on the paper. Now, because this is green, it's kind of hard to gauge how much green I actually have on my card. So I am gonna, oh no, I forgot to mark this off. Mm. I knew I was missing something. Um, That's okay. We'll work with that. So there we go. So lesson learned on that is to mark off the edge of your paper as well. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm flipping it over and I'm going to do the same on this side, but this time I'm going to mark off the edge of that paper so that I don't end up coloring. I haven't decided how I'll fix that yet, but I will. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same down here. So again, I'm being fairly gentle and I'm kind of going with the direction of the cutouts so as not to move them. Because if you move them, then your color ends up not being uniform. And yeah, I always find it doesn't look like you have much down and then you lift it up and you're like, oh, look at that. So there we go. So that's our pair of pizzazz bits um, and then to clean off your brush just run it under um, cold water and the ink is just gonna fall out of that and then I just um, I use like a, a bath towel and I just squeeze it and it takes the water out of the brush and then I just um, hang it well put it in a can of a holder to dry all right what are we gonna do with this to soften the edges we'll figure that out it'll come to me now, I'm going to also add, I'm going to use the stamp set that came with the kit, with the paper pumpkin kit. This is the, the March kit. Um, and it had that bonus stamp set. And I'm going to use Garden Green, which is not retiring. Just want to add a little emphasis. Now, I haven't used this ink pad in a little bit, so I'm just going to test this out. And it's, it is inked. Always a good idea to check. So this is just gonna add a little bit more texture to the card. And I'm kind of trying to mirror what I'm doing on the other side. Goo! It's okay, I can fix that. The beauty of our photopolymer stamps is that they're see-through. So I'm going to attempt to line up my stamp and hope I don't mess it up. How'd I do? Oh, it's a little bit askew. probably looking at this thinking how are you gonna fix all of those little flubs and you know what I may not fix them all and that's okay it's handmade <laughs> it's made with love um, so this ends up going on here I'm gonna put this away before I stick my fingers in it now I am going to feature this is um this is linen goodness is on the tip of my tongue sahara sand sorry this color is sahara sand and i stamped a little nest using the sweet songbird stamp set 
I stamped the nest and Sahara sand on the Sahara sand paper and I've cut it out. I cut it out before the video started so that you didn't have to watch me cut things out because that's not exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is not retiring. What is retiring is the punch and stamp set bundle, meaning that if you buy both together until the end of the month, they're 10% off. Um, after that, they will still be available separately, but at full price both. So that is what that means. Um, I'm going to be using both the punch and I think I'll need the stamp set a little bit more. Now I'm just gonna get rid of my scrap. So that's gonna go with that. Um, I've decided to showcase a few more retiring colors. Um, we are going to use pale papaya for the wing of the, the bird and the bird's little chest piece and we're going to use Mango Melody which is also retiring they're doing um they're really retiring a lot of colors this time around to make room for new colors and returning colors I'm the queen of scraps by the way I've always got so much scrap paper going around <laughs> Is this piece big enough to do my little birdie? It is, just look at that. Punch out the bird's body and his tail. Now what I hadn't decided before the video is what color to make his beak. I'm clearly not going to use Mango Melody because it'd be on top of itself, but I'm still thinking that through. I may do orange, but I don't know if it's gonna work very well. So we've got our little bird. So this piece is meant to be his little chest. And then this is its wing. So this is the bird builder punch. So what's missing is the eyes. Um, you can put the eyes with marker or there are eyes in the stamp set that I'm gonna use. So in the Sweet Songbird stamp set, I'm just using my tiniest block because I find it easier. This is my little block A. Go in with the black. So you could use a marker very easily to do the same. And why did my eyeballs do that? There we go. And I find with these tiny stamps, I try to put them away as I go because they are tiny. All right, so that is the end of that. Now he still needs a beak. So the big question is what color should we make his beak? Actually, the orange works. So let's go in with the orange. Love these little builder punches. Okay, so now we'll assemble our little bird. And I'm just gonna use some liquid glue to add a bit of adhesive to all of these pieces. The little wing piece makes a really good um, leaf as well. which is a fun other use for it. So with bird's belly, oops. And with little wing. And little beak so that's gonna go inside the nest just like so and I got a little too much too too ambitious with the glue there but that's okay I can clean that up so that'll go like so 
Now, I did not want to cut this out on camera either. Um, I love the happy stamp that comes with the stamp set, even though the H and the Y look almost the same. So if the word is like you're looking at it and you're like, why can't I read this? It's because it's upside down. So it's happy. And so I stamped it using polished pink, another retiring color on white. And then I used my scissors to, die, to cut that out. So that's going to go here. And that can overlap the nest a bit. And then I think we'll do a happy spring card. This piece, I honestly don't remember its history. I am also using my scraps today. <laughs> Trying to get through my scrap pile. And I don't know, there's some shimmer going on under there. It's really pretty. So I just want to use it. And again, I have no idea if I made this piece or if it was part of a kit that I'm now using or just a random scrap but I thought it'd be really fun to use it um so I'm going to use my polished pink again and this would look just fine on white as well of course so this piece is a quarter inch tall I guess we'd call it And then I'm just going to use my snips to cut the word where I want it. There we go. And then we can assemble this card. Now it does have a few imperfections that I'm not loving, but I'm trying to think of how to cover up. I know. I'm gonna use my brush before I put, before I assemble the card. I'm gonna do one more thing. We're just gonna create a bit of a border and we're gonna use pear pizzazz to do that. Now I'm gonna try not to go over my leaves because I don't wanna lose those, but here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna blend out the edge. And then it's gonna look a little softer where I flubbed. And it's gonna look like it was meant to be that way. And maybe we're peering into a tree. So um, by going off the edge of the paper this way, I'm creating a bit of a border as well, where it's going to be darker along the edge. And then we're going to go over top where I flubbed a little bit with the green. So it's going to make that a little less obvious, I hope. <laughs> And then with this kind of sort of frame that I'm creating, you just go over it and blend it until you're kind of happy with the intensity of the color. Um, I'm kind of blending it in a little bit so it's not so stark. And I do find I've got a dark spot here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. go see sometimes little imperfections bring projects in a different direction and that's okay it's part of the creative process here we go so it's still it doesn't look great right now but I think it's gonna look really good when we put it together so the first thing I'm gonna do is build my little centerpiece my bird and my nest Now the liquid glue won't stick that well to this because it's almost got like a vinyl-y sort of finish. So I'm going to use my glue dots to do this. I love my glue dots. So I'm not gonna use a lot, I just need enough to get it to stick. The easiest way I find to use them is you kind of peel back the 
These, the dots are to the back. If you're used to the older style, they used to be the other way. <laughs> but they switched it a year or so ago. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same on my little nest. If it doesn't pick up right away, I just apply a little bit more pressure. I think it's actually maybe the heat from your fingers that help transfer the glue dot, but I'm not exactly sure. And there we go. And when I've got too long a piece, I just kind of break that off. So I've got a clean, here we go. I keep thinking of more things that are retiring and I'm like, oh, I could add this, I could add that, but I'm gonna edit myself. <laughs> All right, so the back of this piece is just regular paper. So I'm going to use my liquid glue to adhere that. So I don't know about you, but I quite like the addition of the green blend. And then we've got our little happy. I'm gonna put this on dimensionals so that it pops up a bit more. Um, excuse my reach, I did not grab those prior to filming. So some of these spots are a bit small for a regular size dimensional, so I'm just gonna chop some bits up here. I like to use every little last bit of these guys. And it's kind of like a little puzzle. I'm just putting things where they fit. Is that... I just need one tiny little piece for the top there. And here we go. Now I'll just peel off the backs of these. And I'm gonna make sure it's right side up. <laughs> so I'll put that over here, happy. And spring, oh, that's cute. I'm gonna put spring directly on the paper. So I'm gonna try not to put too much liquid glue so that it doesn't gush out. There we go. Just need a little bit. And there we go. Happy spring. So um, the one thing I haven't got on here is embellishments and it's so tempting to add some. I wonder if, you know what, I'd really like to add a bow, but I don't want to add the full ribbon. And one of the things I love to do with this ribbon, which is also retiring, this is the Pale Papaya Open Weave Ribbon. And it had, it's in um, all five of the retiring in colors. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is cut it. But what I want to do is I want to have a narrow bow. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm just going to cut the ribbon in half. Trying to stay in the center of that open weave. And let's see what this does. I think it'll make for a nicer bow. Somewhat straight. <laughs> there we go. So, let's 
see what this looks like. Let me just put that over here. Yeah. It did twist a bit as it. Just gonna take that in a little bit. So I'm just gonna use a glue dot to put that on. Put the wire over here. And I like to use my take my take your pick tool when I need to form it into like a smaller piece. So I'm just making it into a bit of a ball. Adding that to the back. There we go. And if you've got little bits of glue dot that are sticking out that are going to get sticky on other things, I just use my take your pick tool to tuck those bits in. And then I'll use my scissors to cut that. There we go. Now I'm happy with it. I hope you are too. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on this card and I hope that uh, it's given you a few ideas on how to stencil and use those, uh, those little leaf bits and how to fix when you make a little bit of a flub. <laughs> um, thanks for watching.